could be an animal that has expired or remains of a predator that's fed on something or it could simply be a bird resting and waiting for the planet to heat up so it can fly. I know they're not everybody's favorite as far as looks are concerned. But vultures worldwide plays a very important role in cleaning up all the dead and rotten material. At least the Southern African vultures are mainly scavengers with a few exceptions. This particular species is the most abundant one that we see in this region the African white-backed vulture. You won't be able to see the white back currently, it's a juvenile still, and the white only shows while it's flying. These birds are amazingly adapted for what they do. First of all, very, very long broad wings with what we call a low wing load in order for them to glide and soar and use thermal rising air to take them up to heights in excess of 30,000 foot. In fact, the highest flying bird ever recorded was a vulture from East Africa, the Rupel's vulture, which was confirmed by a military jet at 37,500 foot. That is extremely high. Just shows you how far these birds need to, to go to find food. Phenomenal eyesight. These birds can spot an animal lying on the ground that's expired from thousands and thousands of foot up into the air. It's one of five species that's commonly seen some not so common but this is the most abundant of the five found mainly in this part of the world for the viewers back home we have two major groupings of vultures the so called new world and the old world vultures new world referring to the ones in parts of the Americas, both north and south, old world vultures referring to the ones found in Africa and parts of Asia. One fundamental difference between the two major groupings is that the new world vultures tend to find their food using scent, whereas the African or old world vultures use mainly sight and not scent to locate food. Hi, Jordan from Illinois and Sandy from New York. And several others, in fact, has come up with the same question on Twitter. And they want to know where have I worked before in the Kruger National Park and elsewhere. Currently I'm guiding in the far eastern parts of the Kruger National Park, doing both trails on foot and vehicle safari guiding. During the course of my career it's taken me to the Sabi Sands, uh, the area where we are now, even though it's more to the south of, of the actual Sabi Sands. 
I have done a little bit to the far northwest of the country where I've done horseback safari. I've been involved in the management of natural areas, also within the Kruger area. And then a little bit further to the west, central parts of the Kruger National Park, a reserve called the Timbavati and Tlasiri Nature Reserves, which are just like the Sabi Sand, privately owned portions of the Kruger National Park, the Kruger Greater Kruger Park area. So I've spent the bulk of my career within this particular area, so I do see myself as a bit of a low felt specialist. We refer to this area as the low felt, since it lies mainly below 400 uh, feet above sea level. I have done a little bit of time elsewhere, uh, basically non-professional, more in terms of leisure, Botswana, Namibia, um, basically done quite a lot of holiday in those countries, Mozambique as well, uh, although I never actually worked in those countries, but traveled it extensively. And it just all added to, to the broadening experience and so forth. I hope that does answer your question. We're going to continue. See if we can locate anything on uh, those leopards from yesterday. It would be fantastic if we can finish off today with a leopard. Sorry. We need to show our magic. The leopard is on the way, everyone. Don't worry. Just give us a few minutes. for a second what he's doing but I suspect it's looking for food in that termite mount it appears to be quite an active termite mount looking at that chimney and termites being extremely nutritious lots of protein good amount of fat is a um, very good meal. What I have seen the hornbills do is that if they find an opening in the termite mount, they often tap with their beaks in order to arouse the soldier termites and they rush up and as you can see every now and then he'll swallow one. There we go. Question for our viewers back home. Hornbills, a family of birds that are only found in Africa or not? And repeat the question, trivia. Hornbills, are they only found in Africa or are they found in other parts of the world? And if possible, where in the world as well?
Joanne from Arizona. Seems to be a lot of questions about my uh, my experience and uh, where I've worked. She wants to know where I'm from the Transvaal region of South Africa, originally. Like then that's the Transvaal region is basically the far northern portion of, 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 of the country currently. Uh, it's divided into uh, a few other provinces, namely the Limpopo, which is the northernmost province. Uh, portions of the old Transvaal would have included what's today Mpumalanga province, as well as uh, the northwest. And yes, I was born and raised up in the far north of that region, very close to the far northern boundary of the country, the border. I'm from cattle farming background, and that has introduced me to nature since early childhood. I've always been a nature person, been schooled by the bush at a very, very early stage in my life, and it has definitely set the stage for what I've become today. So very grateful for that, to have had the opportunity to grow up on the countryside, grow up in quite a wild part of South Africa. And uh, in fact, in close proximity to, to, to the northern stretches of the Kruger National Park. And I can recall it was a very frequent event for us to, to go to the National Park on holiday. It's still today a favorite of mine, and I think arguably one of the greatest wilderness areas in the world. Be slowly moving on and leaving this hornball to his breakfast, having termites. in fact, who has sent through a question asking, Chris, what is your favorite animal and what other animals out of Africa would you like to see? Well, folks, that is quite a broad question. Us as guides, <coughs> pardon me, spending our days and careers and lives out in the bush we see so many amazing things at times and it's actually quite difficult to choose one particular favorite but if i'm really pressured into choosing one particular animal as my favorite i would say elephants i love elephants admire their size very strong family bonds and as a family man I can identify with that. Love the way the mothers teach the young calves how to use their trunk. Reminds me a lot of the time when I was young and I had to learn how to ride a bicycle etc etc. So us humans can often relate back to elephants. And I think they are a living example of how society should be. So I'm really, really fond of elephants. Well, I'm free, thank you. As my favorite. An animal that I would really like to see out of Africa is a polar bear. For two reasons. Firstly, that I've never actually seen any snow. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I love predators as well and so polar bear and then just generally any predator out, outside of Africa, wolves, for 
those in the Americas, obviously, uh, cougars or mountain lion, as you call them, go fit go to the south. South America is the jaguar, ocelot, snow leopard, definitely. Uh, snow leopard up in the Himalayas, ranging into the Caucasus Mountains. Definitely a firm favorite. Whether I will ever be able to see them, I don't know. There's a few plans in place eventually to do that, but yeah. Any country that I do travel to will definitely include some sort of nature slash wildlife aspect to it. And bear in mind, us naturalists who live out here in the bush, we'll be excited just seeing one new bird to add onto our list. Waiting for a 